Hey guys. Yeah, Tio. Hello, how are you? All good. Bit of a funky weekend here. Um, if that describes it, like on the weekend, 100 meters, 200 meters away from my house, another house exploded. <laughs> Well, wow, how did that happen? I don't know. It's not yet known. We, we, I guess everybody suspects a gas explosion, but it was a pretty crazy scene. So a bit of an intense weekend. I mean, that, nothing happened to us, but we are definitely sorry for something like that in our neighborhood. Um, yeah, but other than that, I'm fine. How are you, Manuel? Ah, Just great. Thanks. <laughs> What did I hear about a gas explosion? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's um, next to like, I don't know, it's about 200 meters away from my house, another house exploded. Oh. So, yeah, bit of a sad weekend. Oh, we're getting some company. Gem, PayPal, interesting. Yeah, hey guys, Hi, sorry, I haven't, done, I haven't done all the background reading. Um, I'm, Never mind. <laughs> I'm on the cloud events working group. That's why I sort of, um, I've sort of been trying to keep an eye on this. Um, and so I asked Kathy to sort of forward the invite for me. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. And we have one more, Ricardo. Hello there. Ricardo, if you're talking, I saw you unmuted and then muted again. Okay, maybe he has trouble with his audio. Yeah, before we get started, and I think Manuel will, if you want to drive this again, it would be nice. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I, I just want to give it one or two more Yeah, minutes. yeah, I just I, wanted to kind of bring up, oh, you yeah, have to wait for people. Okay, yeah, yes. sure. I had a few uh, positive uh, responses on the invite. So there is one more, Dan. Hello, Dan. Oh, sorry, uh, Tiomir, so you wanted to say something. Oh, we still have time, like one or two minutes. No, I just wanted to bring up the sure. TLC. If anybody, everybody has seen it, this is a big deal for us. We submitted a PR to the CNCF technical committee. And hopefully soon we will have an official review. And then we'll get feedback of... What we have is good enough to move to a sandbox. This means a lot of things, hopefully. Now, I'm kind of new to this too. So Doug is, is you know, is kind of, needs to help us a lot on this. But uh, from what I've seen, it means uh, our own GitHub repository, which uh, by itself is a big win, a new mailing list, hopefully. And hopefully a dedicated host uh, IP for a website. I'm um, hoping. Yeah, that would be great. Um, any ideas? I, I'm very new to the CNCF myself. Uh, any idea how, what, what's the time range here? Uh, is it weeks or, uh, I, I suspect this depends on how often the TOC uh, meets and discusses this, right? And then we need to move through six stages to gather support for becoming a sandbox project. Yeah, we're, we, I will put it on the chat. We will get a date. And if you follow the PR, you'll probably see it yourself. The way I understand it is we have to wait for their TOC meetings. Uh, and we will get slotted into one of them. 
uh, to present. And then, then it's not a really presentation, so nothing you guys have to worry about. The most important thing for us right now is to show community and to show progress in one way or another. And I think having a lot of people in these meetings shows that, and I'm very happy, or at least, you know, a, a number of them. Uh, yeah, so also let me uh, again try to welcome Dan and Ricardo. Hi, if you're there, uh, feel free to just say hello. Hi, Ricardo. Hi, Manuel. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working for Red Hat. I work with Jehovah, and uh, I will help him with the, the serverless thing as well. So I'm, I'm, this is the, my first meeting. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Two, two heard about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me start. And talking about the TOC PR is actually a good thing because uh, along the way to become Sandbox Project, um, what we need to show, of course, is community, but also a little bit of um, a background or um, additional material than just the spec itself. Uh, we had a motivation from Doug, uh, I think in November last year, when there was the first uh, vote on the subgroup um, proceeding as an individual group, that we should come up with a primer, very much like Cloud Events has done it. And the primer document is, as I understand it, is not the specification. So the specification would have a normative reference that would be maybe our JSON schema, maybe something in a different, um, format. Uh, we do have a uh, natural language specification as well. So these documents, bo these, they both describe the state of the current uh, workflow specification. But the primer would explain, um, the would motivate first how all of this is being done. And I know there, there are a few mentions of why we do this in form of goals or in, in background information um, across the documents we've written. But it's good to have this in at, as the starting point of the primer to motivate why the specification came about. And then also to motivate uh, the design of the specification. So why we have chosen uh, to describe a workflow of states. And this maybe requires us to name a little bit the roots of this specification, so what concept it originates from um, to explain why we are adopting this uh, weird terminology. I mean, one could argue that, well, we just sort of copy um, the Amazon states language, but maybe there is a, a little bit of background to that so people uh, can uh, build their this, this understanding in their mind when they start reading the primer before actually diving into the specification. And then we can provide uh, a little bit of explanation of the concepts that are recurring throughout the specification. Um, because I think there are a few concepts applied here. And then we can also uh, point out the affiliated projects and how um, we or how the, the specification relates to these other projects. I think this is very important also um, to show that it integrates into the CNCF and it's not just a project that stands on its own. For example, um, currently it is affiliated to the cloud events as uh, cloud events can be used to trigger workflows and also workflows can produce cloud events. This is specifically stated yeah. in the current specification. Yeah, yeah, but no, if I can just, can I just jump in for just a second, please? Please. Yes, uh, two things for, I've been thinking about this primer and since, since w the scope of serverless workload, you know, we have to see is much bigger than cloud events itself. It's a format, just JSON. Of, however, they also have like 10 times the team that we currently have and, 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 and have contributed. So I would really, if possible, put this, and if you guys agree, in two steps. One is a short term, one is a long term. The primer for this specification can be miles long, pages long and very in depth. If we wanted to go in there where everybody can contribute and we got some people in place like yourself and Falco and others who have very deep knowledge into this to contribute. However, for again, going back to this TOC in short term, we need some sort of primer 
uh, for short term. And that's why I put on a document. We need something to show some background. I think they will look at that. And I think for that, maybe comparing it, even stating, like you said, yes, our, there is a lot of interest in this. There is a lot of different workflows for serverless in integration. We don't really have to say everything, why, and what was the reason, and where, but comparing it to two or three things, even if they're completely similar, or uh, which might people say they are, some not, but giving examples currently in the short term, I think is the best idea, and then we can move and evolve this document. This does not have to be a document that's set in stone right now, but if we can put milestones behind it, like let's say milestone one is X, milestone two is Y, and, and, and stuff like that, but then, then we can all involve it. But we need something by the end of the month probably, which I assume we will get the, the TOC call to actually show. And at that point, we can just say, yes, we have a primary, it's in its early stages, but at least we have it. You know, because this can drag out forever, right? Am I wrong? Um, I don't think this needs to be comprehensive. Uh, it's. I, I agree that um, we don't need to be exhaustive here and write pages long documents. I think books have been written on on this, and there is a huge amount of uh, research. And but really, what we need, what I, I believe we need to give, is uh, some motivation to why we need the workflow specification. Um, it may be why, for example, it needs to be specific to serverless. Uh, I had this one comment from Scott that, um, yeah, but how, why, how is it, your invocations that you orchestrate, how are they serverless? Is this, and I think he was getting to whether this is just by assumption or whether there is actually something to the spec. And yes, we can say there is something to the spec. For example, our embedding in our Sorry, interoperability with cloud events, something that makes this, um, okay, then Scott might argue it's cloud events is not serverless, but just by stating that, yes, um, this is a serverless specification language without anything to, any, any reason to why this is serverless, we could just name it workflow language. Um, so we need to put a little bit of motivation in here, and I think we have all of this, or all of this has um, created the specification, which is is, is great. Um, but we need to get people from outside on board and give them give them a little bit of reasoning for them to get the importance of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, this is Falco. I also don't have any ambition to write a book about the reasoning for why we have this separate language. Um, I think we should focus on one concise document, however that looks like, that describes to the TOC why this matters. Otherwise, I mean, you know, writing a book about it, that's nothing that's, that's necessary. Maybe later on, one can have some more explanation in the spec, but for now, I guess we just put ourselves yeah. under some time pressure now, right? Now we yeah. will get a slot very soon well, and we yeah. need to produce something. Yeah, and, and that was the whole point of this is to kind of keep moving us forward. We have to move forward in order not to stagnate, number one. And number two is the main reason that I think, and you got, I guess this is a meeting for that. We, the main reason to even do the specification regardless of we, right why this is done like that or or the other in much detail is because every month there is a new workflow language coming out and it called yeah. themselves serverless and there is no standardization so our number one motivation why this is even called the standard is to standardize xyz one two three you know so that's kind of like i think for a primer would be right now for the short term kind of like the main drive where we can show the TOC why this is relevant. Uh, otherwise, we're just one of many, many other workflow languages. However, we tend to standardize things across the board, and this is why we're a standardization. We're not an implementation right here. So that, if we can put in the primer as a top kind of paragraph and then evolve it into the future, maybe with some examples, uh, between what we have compared to two, maybe that's enough for now. 
other uh, model uh, model workflow models, I would be very happy with that right now. And then later on, we can. Now we have yeah, a roadmap and put it on the roadmap and and and, and keep working on. It. That's good. I mean, if we have that as the primer, as the first version of the primer, that's totally valid, right? And then the document can evolve. Yeah, I mean, I would be just happy to have it. And then, then, then I think TOC will be happy just to see that we're all working on this together. And then keep moving forward. And every, every release, we got to focus on also releasing version 0 0.1. And I think having a primer is a big deal for that. So if we can have some sort of description of, 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 of other languages, how many, that more incoming, and why a standard is needed for portability, vendor neutral uh, model, blah, blah, blah. Um, that, would be, yeah. that would be very good. Yeah. So yeah, the, the vendor neutral thing is, is, is sort of um, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, because if, no vendor implements it then i mean why have it so there is it, it, need, it needs endorsement uh and this is also i think why we should really motivate and give enough background and sure the, the specification that we have right now we can move this to version 0.1 um and also the time frame i think is okay a little bit of pressure is always good <laughs> Put a deadline out, and stuff will be will be done. So, is there a summary somewhere of what's necessary for this TOC submission? Now that we are on their backlog, like, is there any documentation of what are the, the deliverables there? So, from what I understand, yeah, there's a there, there. and a lot of and a presentation. Oh, yeah, I, th I think you, if you if you look at the TOC, uh, the governance and the project, uh, how you can uh, go from like become an incubator in project and graduate, uh, you'll find enough information. I, I don't want to discuss the uh, TOC PR too much in detail here. I, I'd rather want to focus on what we should put in the primer. So how is it that Primer goes into that PR as well or goes somewhere separately and gets linked into the PR? Um, oh, no, no. Uh, I think the PR is, is just this separate process. And at some point, the TOC will look at our project. And when we have a Primer, it's nice. If we don't, then, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. then we have less to show for. That's just it. So it's not mandatory, but there's something that seems a little bit like best practice, or at least for cloud event that works. Yeah, um, Doc mentioned it might be a good idea to have a primer document. Um, yeah, and especially because we had some people saying they would do it like a year ago and we are kind of like right now still don't have it and apparently it's an important document that we must include, whatever, I don't know. Great, so should we do some brainstorming on that? I think there was some something started already yeah let me see if i can bring up the document oh yeah i have to click share now okay so maybe for the people who are new to this, um, today's call was particularly scheduled for a working session on this design you know, discussion or primer discussion. That's why we are not following the, the normal agenda that you would be expecting from the regular monthly meetings. Yes, I, I haven't attended one of uh, Clement's <laughs> uh, discussions on the cloud subscriptions that are currently also going on in the working group. I think this is such a sort of breakout to, to work on uh, the primer document. And uh, I motivate everyone to just comment or put stuff into this document. Uh, I First, I put it out to be um, comment only, but uh, I opened it up because I found that yeah, tell me you wanted to add something. You made suggestions, and that's good. I, I took them. Uh, also, Scott Nichols had a few uh, 
remarks and one of them was that the document wasn't public and uh, does not allow editing. So uh, I think I opened it now so everybody can um, and suggest new text uh, for not, not to clash or let's say for us to work on this, um, it might be good if we use the suggestion mode and then discuss it or maybe have a comment on this and if people sign off then we we are okay with it if people have uh, because if stuff is changing too fast um, we lose people on the way so I myself I only maybe I can maybe spend one or two days uh, per week on this at most and that is already a big contribution so uh regards for that. So yes, I have started with affiliated specifications because I thought that these um, are very good to explain how w the workflow specification embeds into the CNCF landscape and how it relates to, to other things. Maybe we want to, or just Dante asking, do you think it's good to adopt the um, the structure of the cloud events primer? I can take an action item and uh, you apply the structure of that primer here. Yep. Yeah. Just use as much as you can from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can be a baseline, and if we need to change, we can change later. But. If that was proven to work, let's start with that. Yeah. It comes about with a history. And uh, so the history of this document, we already have um, the original desi design document that Casey, I think she opened it up. Uh, at least I have uh, read access to that uh, serverless one function workflow um, design document. It, Please try it. It it's like a primer. <laughs> it's like a, uh, I think it it also served as the workflow specification proposal, and it uses an example and already states what it is that the specification should cover. So um, that event yeah. specifications and cloud events and so on. So, uh, but I I didn't feel like copying this over would do any good. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would I would start off with focusing of the current landscape, which you have done a great job with. Uh, carry over as much from the references document that you have already contributed with to describe the landscape. Uh, second, I would focus on, and we can go through that if you need to, stateless versus stateful. I think that's a big deal because a lot of languages, even AWS, which is the leader, has a separate implementation for one and the or the other. So that's a big deal, I think. And the second, of course, the cloud events integration and not only integration but kind of the tie-in that you pretty much have to if you use events you have to use cloud events so link the cloud event specification would be a good thing mm -hmm. um, and then focus in the beginning chapter so I would say uh, this is just my opinion you guys can tell me I'm crazy on describing or giving an example like you already have a BPM and two uh, B, uh, AWS, maybe Conductor, maybe, you know, the ones that you have found, some good examples. Mm -hmm. um, and the, another focus that you probably have to put a little bit, can you say, well, can you use other things to create serverless workflows? The answer is yes. So we're not uh, saying that there is no other options for designing serverless and specifically serverless workflows. However, given the state of the, the, the landscape currently, uh, this is what people are using. And however, this is why there is no standard and this is why a standard is needed. And kind of leave it at that for version one mm -hmm. and keep moving forward then with, with description of details and okay. 
that's just my opinion, but but you you guys can figure it out. Okay. Um, I had an I, okay. I had a feeling that we might want to because there was a lot of discussion on the terminology that um, this has adopted, right? The the way we call state states and uh, using transitions is also nice because it's in line with the the state diagram terminology. But um, yeah, we <laughs> call the entire thing workflow. So um, do you think it makes sense to um, at least reference these concepts to describe, hmm, yeah, <laughs> to describe a series of serverless executions? Because this is what we want, right? Without saying workflow or state diagram or pipeline, uh, what we do want is to orchestrate serverless executions. Yeah, I think that makes sense, especially I mean, the terminology is one part, but maybe we should really clearly state under which assumptions we are designing this and also what is the niche we are targeting. Because you, keep, you guys keep saying that we are like a smaller targeted language for a particular niche and that should be well identified, I think, right? Yeah, basically uh, what you can write there, uh, Manuel, is something, yeah. and don't quote me, but you know, uh, currently you have to look at how people develop serverless applications and you can maybe define even, I'll give you, I think I did I share the slides from my presentations where they, I think when I presented it, you had an example and you can show that uh, similarly to uh, typical applications, they're non-serverless, uh, developers have to write both business logic and orchestration logic mm -hmm. in, in the same code base, maintain it, how, the problems around that are many, uh, the same reason why workflows are used in traditional development environments as well. But in typically in serverless, you have this uh, code that you deploy, they're called functions. And again, serverless workflow are specific for those environments to, to, to distinguish orchestration logic from business logic. So again, we're allowing developers to focus on their business, on the core code they're wanting to develop. And we're offloading all this other stuff, uh, orchestration, data management, control flow logic, you can say even all kinds of stuff in there uh, from that base development effort that developers need to focus on. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like the main topic on, on, on what we're trying to do. And again, say, yes, we're that's a pretty good targeting motivation. serverless, serverless environment where functions are deployed. Uh, your applications are deployed as event driven applications, small ones. So hi, this is Jam. I, I was going to be listening along and I think you guys are making valid points. I think the word, when people see the term workflow orchestration, they immediately will leap to, you know, large industrial scale business process automation. Um, I, I think what you're referring to is really, uh, and I think it's what the previous speaker was talking to, you, you really talk about function orchestration, yeah? Uh, or micro process orchestration or something. Um, and sort of, if you can sort of couch it in those terms, I think it'll be more uh, understandable and people will be able to reason about it a bit more rather than thinking of big long running sort of business transactions. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to really say what is the particular niche and, um, you know, for example, um, on, on the one hand, we want to explain the leverage from plain programming or having orchestration in code versus having orchestration extracted into workflows. On the other hand, we also want to differentiate like which features of, let's say traditional workflow are not covered in here. For example, I guess human task management is something that we don't care too much about. But then we need to kind of prove that this assumption that we are taking a shortcut and making a smaller subset is actually valid and we will not have features creeping in later because we missed something and our assumption was maybe too little or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm. 
I'm not sure I got your point, but I think the, of course, we what we will also have from this is um, the non-goals, right? Mm -hmm. The non-goals and why it is okay to leave them out. I guess yes. that's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay, this is almost enough to <laughs> uh, get me working for a while. Um, so please, whenever, uh, tell me, would, would you be uh, willing to, what you summarized with the uh, letting the um, developer focus on the business logic offload or the orchestration? Yeah, yeah. So I'll help you with this, no, no problem. I'll yep. put in pictures in there and everything, it's just, we need to all together come up with, like you said, like those bullet points, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we can all kind of dive in and, and, and contribute and then get together and talk about it. Perfect. What I, um, yeah. I think I missed, uh, Falco, maybe I may, I may have missed um, your point, the, the non-goals, we, we somehow need to um, make maybe a section for this uh, regarding pictures. Uh, examples are nice, but I think examples are very, um, they cover a lot of space. So if we can put this uh, in a short paragraph, and that of an exhaustive example, then it would be easier to digest the primer. So as you said, uh, Tiumir, I, I don't want this to be a um, hundred pages long document. This should really just be a short primer uh, that gives the motivation for all of this and explains the, the concepts and the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, yeah, yeah. it's always as people always say a picture says more than a thousand words. Yeah, so and 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 and, and you can you can be good. yeah link to our use case document. I I added some, I think nice looking images. I don't know if they're useful in this case, but you can say hey here's some use cases uh, for yeah. So yeah, you don't have to embed them in here, but link to the document yeah. would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just do that later. Yeah. And I'll send you again, I'll put it on the channel, my entire PDF on the slides. So if you can borrow any text, anything from there, you're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. So that's our spec. Okay. Um, I have started this references thing. So uh, as you said, Tiamir, there is a new workflow spec coming out every week. There is, there are a few projects and I, I don't really know how to rate them by importance. Um, so Scott mentioned we should, uh, we should have Tekton in here. And I know Tekton is a CI CD pipelining system, and I know underneath it uses Knative. Um, it was very present in uh, at last KubeCon. There were a few talks, uh, IBM and the Red Hat booth, I think they both promoted it, if I remember correctly. And uh, so it, within the CNCF, I think it definitely has some importance. Um, there is also, uh, Kubeflow, which uses Argo pipelines underneath. And what it is, um, is every step of their pipeline is um, an image, a container image. So they really model, uh, they build the steps as um, launchable instances, pods maybe, or, or containers. Don't nail me down on the, on the wording. And then they orchestrate or they they execute this pipeline. Uh, it seems very related to, and I know Kubeflow uh, is gaining some um, importance, uh, at least in the ML community. But do you think 
Oh, is, is there any project? So we named Conductor um, and I still have this on my to-do list to look at the, uh, which is the open whisk uh, sequence or, or open whisk function, serverless function orchestration, right? The Conductor. Is there any other project that you would deem important? Well, how much work are you going to put into this? I think from the beginning, use the ones where the documentation is really good, right? So if you look, go to AWS step functions, they have a bunch of examples. Some of the examples I even used for our examples, you know, because they're, they're just there. You can reuse them. Um, just Netflix conductor has one example in their documentation, which is also very good. Uh, that is kind of called a kitchen sink, right? Where they use everything in every one of their constructs. So pick like two, just two that mm -hmm. you can find good documentation for and put it on there. And then let's see how and uh, we can all work together to come up. How we can we, uh, and, and please guys stop me at any point. I'm talking too much, but our goal for this is not an implementation based goal. We are not worried about implementation. And quite frankly, I recently updated our specification to say we don't care this whole argument between uh, workflow versus state machine we don't even care about that honestly at this point probably what we care about is that our specification model language can describe what other workflows are doing right because that's that's kind of like the goal right now if if some languages out there have much better much more descriptive manner of, of doing many more things they might not we might not be targeting them but we can target netflix and we can target aws 100 percent currently so maybe let's focus on those now right and anything about the implementation like context instances of workflows let's keep that out of here for now because quite frankly i don't think we're there yet we just focus just on the model how can we describe this how can we describe that um, and then leave it like that you know, for now. Which is invocation of functions alone. So invocation of, let's say, serverless functions. We, we currently have the URIs, so not even, I think I had one, yeah, it's right here. I, I had mentioned services, but this is not to orchestrate, or is it, is it to orchestrate between functions and services? And do we do we even make a distinction between something running as a serverless or not? Um, no, whether it is a serverless function or a microservice or anything, we do not care. We should not even care. Put down specific function or one of the things that our actions can invoke are functions or microservices or whatever. Uh, the only thing that we are hundred percent kind of tied to our cloud events format and that's it everything mm -hmm. else uh, is uh, whatever implementations want to focus on in this case because quite frankly in our implementation for example that we're working on we can invoke an http uh, request or we can call a webhook it doesn't matter what this function invocation is as long as it evokes something that that you know you see what i'm saying and it does need to provide a result, right? It can if that function provides a result, okay? But a, a function invocation does not have to have 100% a result. Okay. Mm. I find so, this a bit pretty interesting. So, you know, if we say, and I agree, it, the, what we're designing here doesn't necessarily need to focus exclusively on functions. But then we are entering in this, the general space of service orchestration. And I think then it will be difficult to differentiate between other orchestration languages in this. So I'm not sure how to scope this. But we, uh, the way we scope this is by our definition of a function, which has a uh, resource location, right? And parameters. So the, the this is kind of like what AWS does too, right? I mean, you can with AWS uh, call a ser AWS service or anything that's behind a, what is it called? ARN, right? An R. Mm -hmm. We do not know what that is. Uh, so we cannot say. 
but we don't describe a, a, our function execution with a class path, okay? Or some sort of other way. We, we have a specific resource, which is a string. Uh, we mm -hmm. can define further if we want to, how we define this to make this clear. But currently we, we cannot say we only invoke functions because we invoke I think, I think anything. We might. we might need to be a bit more specific. Currently, uh, uh, the function ref only carries a uniform resource identifier. So similar like in ARN, that's not even location bound. Um, so it could be, it could identify pretty much everything. And we're not, so the invocation semantics, except for the parameters that are being passed, they are not covered by the specification. And so you said cloud events is, um, I know cloud events can trigger workflows and workflows can produce cloud events, but uh, the function invocation is not using cloud events, or is it? Or should uh, it? No, the, what I'm saying is uh, the only thing that our workflow definition understands is when it comes to event consumption is the cloud event format. Yep. for event states and, 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 and stuff like that. that. That's the only bound that we're putting onto implementations because and only because our, in our workflow model, the events are described using the context variables uh, defined in the cloud event specification. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, we actually tried, <laughs> we implemented ASL ourselves. And then uh, what we wanted to show is like you could, quickly convert from a step function definition to running it uh, on our system, but uh, problem are ARNs, right? So they are Amazon specific and this, you cannot just orchestrate uh, any set of services and functions uh, with that because the ARN eventually, you have to translate it to something that is known to your own system. As long as the lambdas are executing on on Amazon, that's okay. That works. But um, and and I thought cloud cloud events was helping here for interoperability, right? Yeah, we we, we specifically, if you look at the schema uh, for functions, and I'm sorry, this is sidetracking. We can take this offline if you want. Look at the type parameter. We, in addition to an ARN, which is kind of like the only thing that AWS allows you to do we do allow uh, implementations to, to, to put in a specific type. So if implementer says, okay, this is type is HTTP or this type is webhook, then they can use that uh, in the model to further describe what the source string means, mm -hmm. all right? Um, so we do have that little bit of an extension to, to, yep. to, to say that. I think because this is at the boundary of the workflow spec, much like the cloud events uh, to invoke a workflow and uh, to a workflow to produce. I think this is this needs some emphasis in this this motivation. So just outlining uh, what is the boundary between a workflow definition and and its execution and the outside world. Maybe we can we can mention this along with the use of cloud events. That's very good. It was uh, from looking at the spec. I I didn't see what is actually behind that, or what what this flexibility means that it can be. That's cool. That's I think that's very relevant. Okay, uh, how do you feel about the concepts that we do? Um, so we mentioned event consumption and producing events. Um, there is control flow, definitely. And um, the use of, for example, the, the choice state or the, the transitions. That's, the transitions are something that we have with every state. And I think it has its own uh, explanation in the spec. Um, should we describe the concept of 
states or pick up the concept of states and transitions between states uh, like in the finite state machine to motivate the design of the workflow specification language or do you think this is unnecessary because you mentioned earlier that um, for now we don't care for now we want just something that works right Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put this troll state machine in there at all. We're not okay. a state machine description to begin with because we cannot invoke any state at any point in time. We do have a dedicated starting state or, or, or node or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, so we are not fully a state machine in my opinion. And that's a discussion that like everybody's going to have a different opinion on. I will keep that out. Implementation, implement it whatever, however you want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> implement it with TFL statements. I don't care. You know. No, the nice thing about transitions is that actually, at the end of uh, execution or evaluating every state, we can have a transition to any other state. Uh, and a finite state machine, more or merely automata, they would define a starting point. And then transition to states. The only difference here is I think there, there can be an end state, but this can go on like forever. You could loop uh, on purpose if you wanted to, right? And I think what the cloud uh, or what, sorry, what the serverless workflow spec is trying to define is something that is, uh, that has a deterministic end. We want this to be some data flow with a result. Definitely. I would definitely say that we describe uh, something that has a starting point, that has an ending point, and is repeatable. That I would like put in bold because that kind of uh, implies implementation and actually something that can be executed in real life. Um, so, because that's what we're doing. We're implementing orchestration logic, which is repeatable. And uh, yeah, I would kind of put it as a focus too. We can be tested easily. We have some states already in place that are specifically designed to aid testing. Um, so definitely, yeah, put that in there as well is, is, is something that you feel like. What do you mean by, by testable? Um, I will show one second. My computer just went dead. You mean verifying inputs, outputs, that sort of thing? That is also a very nice aspect of the specification? Yes, definitely. And also, if. Uh, one second. I'm talking. Can you hear me? I'm talking yes. specifically about, uh, for example, the relay state, right? Yes. Uh, that's That was specifically done in mind with thinking about testing. So you can inject your own data into that you're ex testing with into your workflow um, and, and, and see how your workflow behaves in the diff different conditions, uh, that being different data inputs. Um, so, the, so that's another thing you might wanna, if, you, if we wanted to say that we're repeatable, we, uh, this is good, uh, has testing in mind. Another thing that mm -hmm. would bring into your document, if you just wanna describe what we're targeting is the extensible aspect of it. So in addition to, and that's something that a lot of people lack uh, and don't have, um, is that you get a the model definition, you have to use what they give you. We also have the extensive extending aspect in our uh, specification where you can define your own uh, additions to the modeling language if you choose. So that's similar to what BPMN also has. Yeah. By the way, is there any but kind of names very... available for extensions? Uh, since we are describing in JSON, uh, there is no, I looked into that, there is no way of doing namespaces. Maybe there is that I don't know of. Uh, that would be a nice addition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what I expected. Um, then maybe the only choice is use kind of naming conventions or prefixes of some sort. Yeah, currently every extension has to have a unique ID. We also have a PR open for uh, uh, metadata, which extensions currently are extension elements. You can think of those like, you know, the, the extension elements like BP SIM, for example. 
but there was a, a PR to also do a, a property extension, uh, which is on hold. But if you guys want to resurrect that, I think it's a good idea. We can resurrect that as well. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I always disliked uh, vendor specific extensions. Um, it's I personally, but this is just my personal opinion. I always uh, consider the the standard body to be a little bit of a failure if you have an extensive use of these extensions. Um, so, yeah, I mean, unless the, the standard can be just taken to the next version to include what people want, uh, I, I don't see a, a point in overlaying it with, with extensions. Mm, I, I mean, but I this is agree, but for example, the function binding, unless we define how any, so, uh, like every different serverless framework can be bound against our function definitions, um, there needs to be some room for technology. But this is, yeah, but this is right? not the same as an extension, right? So if by function binding, you mean um, the type of function invocation that it is and the realization of performing this function invocation, then we do have a type field and everything used in there is already vendor specific. But the property extension would be to introduce new properties of states. Mm -hmm. But for the function itself, if you need any metadata on the function, that need, would need to go into additional elements, right? Yeah, and usually you have um, elements where you do not specify further, like there is a metadata element and then people can put mm -hmm. whatever there, or if you have some property that is just a string, people might start abusing it to pass what they seem necessary. Mm -hmm. um, these sort of things. I don't know if, uh, because eventually what you want is to also verify um, a description and then having it extensible makes it very uh, difficult to run the same verification on it over and over. So yeah, it's my, my personal opinion. Um, really, I, I don't want to stand in the way of, I think first we need to come to a 1.0 and then yeah. we can and also allow for extensions. Another point, if, you, if, if I can just bring it up, sorry, that you can put down there, what distinguishes this from, let's say, AWS, is that we describe our model via JSON schema. They don't, okay? Yeah. Netflix doesn't. So we have an actual schema description of our modeling, of our model, which is very useful for implementation, you know, coding, uh, can generate code out of it in different languages and just general API uh, yep. creation. Yeah, I wouldn't brag too much about it. I would consider that a given fact that every standard should do something like that. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's hard to call it a standard if it's hard to verify and stuff. But anyway, for fair point, let's put that somewhere as a differentiator. It sounds uh, like a yeah like a pretty good starting point for a primer document. Uh, we're also almost at the top of the hour, so um, I would like to discuss one more thing, and that is follow up call, and then um, conclude maybe with a call to action. But um, follow up call. So this time slot seems to work for everybody. Unfortunately, next week I do have a conflict and you could just go on without me or we find a different time slot now, if you would like to. I'm pretty flexible if you want to move to a different day. Sounds good. I think we could use your contribution. You're doing um, really valuable moderation here. Wow. Thanks. Completely agree. You should do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, how about moving it later into the evening?
Oh, sorry, later in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Closer to lunch for you guys in the US. Anything before midnight CT is fine with me. So I could think of, um, it's an, we can also decide it uh, weekly, but for next week, uh, would 8.30 p.m., that is... Um, One and a half hours later than today. Yeah. So 11.30. I don't know if it eats into your lunchtime, <laughs> dear Mia. Or... I don't care. Uh, it's fine with me, but can I just say one more thing before we break? Just yes, real of quick. Of Thank you. Number one, please, before the end of the month, um, please look at the specification. If you understand it, if you're new or not, um, spell check it. If you find any issues or problems, misspelled words, things you don't understand, either raise an issue or be brave and actually do a PR. This is mostly for the new people. We really need right now, we're in the status where every small thing, just formatting, making things right, will make us look better for this TOC review. Um, please, I think nobody here objects to Ed Falco, who has contributed a PR recently to add him as a contributor. And for the new people here, if you just do the smallest PR there is, any contribution matters and your name will be added to the list of contributors. So you'll have your name somewhere on CNCF, hopefully soon a sandbox project. So if that, hopefully it will motivate the new people to, to, to look at it and contribute. Thanks. Yes, and I just joined the call to action. Um, please, if you have comments on the document, uh, always just note it down. It's, it's better than uh, forgetting about it and then not picking up on it. Uh, picking up on it is, is uh, I guess, on, on the editor's uh, side of my end or for someone to pick up an idea, develop it, and maybe uh, put something in the document. If some project comes to mind, I think we have already a few um, just to maintain this as a list also is, is very valuable, I think, to show awareness of um, the world and not do our specific stuff here that is yeah, um, very niche. Um, so please, whatever you feel like should be in the document, uh, any valuable comments, always very, very appreciated. Okay. okay. And then, um, yeah, any other business? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, okay, no additional participants. And <laughs> I think we can conclude this and I'll send out the invite also for next week's meeting, Monday, uh, 11.30 Pacific time or 8.30 PM uh, Central European time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.